wants the more aggressive route for himself. And after his Game 5 performance against Splice, you got to know that he's feeling confident in that pick. Solo zoning Senkux out of a number of fights, securing Some the win. The problems comes from late game, where they haven't been able to cleanly execute games and they're losing team fights. Uh, top lane gank, though. Right, it's on a look on the stacks. Three and four is going to be the stun up. Spec does have the ultimate. Odawana is going to have to flash out to safety. First blood dropping for G2. That's the power of the Chogun. Remember, a few minutes ago, we talked about how... Pull back. We have to remember, HK have only one member top, four members on the bottom side. First finish they're gonna get picked off here. Ice ball moving forward. It's gonna be hard to make it away from that one. No ultimate moving forward. That's gonna be a kill back for H2K. It's not over yet. Locked up into the tower. Yanko's set to fall. No heal available. That's still gonna be the one for one. Trick fires back, and Sven finally gonna get the topside tower. But right now we have at H2K. Here this one out, but now Trick potentially in trouble. The flash forward, the flay not gonna connect from Che. The hook not gonna connect either. That's gotta be embarrassing. Goodbye. Dodging out, Nunu looks for the disengage, but Che... Double Mountain Drake, but they don't have Cassiopeia here yet. They don't have Tristana either. Mithy all alone. Flashes as soon as he makes it out of the Miasma. Is going to need to try to make it to safety. Pulverize. Looks for the disengage. Che over the wall. That hook is going to connect. Moving forward, the flay. Mithy trying to run for his life. The Blast Cone. Che making it out to safety. Sven is over the wall. Trick trying to hunt down the support. All on his lonesome, but that's advantage here. Chogat yeah. versus Nunu. Who's going to get the Baron in the end? Trick is coming over the wall. Che does manage to connect the hook. Nuclear still in the pit. They're burning it down. It's Trick true. gets it in the end. 50-50 in the favor. Nunu, is this the time? Expect ready to go over the wall. Miasma not going to block any entrance to the pit. Looking to get this one. Will H2K secure it? They get this Baron. It. Now they have to get out of the fight. A shockwave going to be it's going to connect on the two. Multiple members look set to fall. Mithy going to be pushed out of the fight by Nuclear, not giving him a chance to make any plays. Odo, he may just be the sacrificial lamb, but can the rest of H2K escape? They got the Baron recalls. They're using them. Yankos is out, but they know, okay, with the double mountain, no, no, they could do Watch it. out. Bevan finally going to get hit up. Yankos looking for the ult to try to disengage. We'll get pulled back into the team. Bevan is looking to get burned down. This could be bad news for H2K. That is one carry dead. It is all on Nuclear to clean up the fight. Odawamne is coming in on the backside, but G2 have found an opportunity. They've found the pick that they need. Run, no, no, run! Blood Boil may take them away. Blood Boil may be enough. Odawamne! Not no. enough! The ward comes down. The play that made Yankos famous this split. Now used against him as Odo tries to run for his life. Odo Omne running to Che. He's waiting on that lantern cooldown. Will he get it in time? Where's the feast at? May not have it. Nope, there it is. Nom, nom, nom. G2, man. Oh, that's so no flash from Trick this time around, but uh, Mithy is starting the fight. I bet Pulverize. Nuclear trying to make it out to safety. No input buffer on that one. Thresh cannot save the day. It's all just prey at this point for G2. Easy to run him down, just gonna move under the tower. No one is there to save him. G2 dominating. Second time where G2 plays a line. Exactly what you want. But Odawamne, he's gonna fire back. He's gonna get that bottom tier two in his team's favor. But with an inhibitor open, it gets so much easier for G2 to play the map. One constant source of pressure there in the mid lane. In the inventory of G2, and most people would call those for vision. I call, I call that counterplay as the on the hunt comes out and is going to be stunned up onto Odawamne. We'll have a chance to use the subjugate shortly. Slowfield goes in, knowing he's going to get knocked on oh, the rusher. They're all going to be pulled Ooh. in. That's the five-man shockwave moving forward. Sivir on the way, but a beautiful disengage from Febbin. I don't think it's going to be enough. Sven takes down Jay. Ready, but Smike and 2K dropping. It's gone. Chogas going to take that one back. Odawamne waiting, looking for an opportunity, but Deficio to bring it home because G2 are still applying all this pressure. They're running straight at them. On the hunt, Hughes. Nunu all going to try to find the disengage, but they're just going to eat through Yankos. No hesitation. Nuclear is free hitting onto the back line. The two man engage coming in from Perks. Che now knocked up, knocked down. G2 looking for a little bit more as the double kill drops for Expect. H2K, they're running for their lives. Not a single member can afford to get hit by anything where this game could end in the favor of G2. They're going to go for more. Nope, Mythy gets denied right there. Perks and the rest of G2 are looking for the Nexus turrets. Clear doing what he can, but the sh command, attack, the dissonance. Zoning him out completely. Keep your eyes on the ball. Nuclear and Febivin cannot get anywhere close there. One tower at a time. G2 looking to make a statement here. Making it slowly but surely as they look to break down this Nexus. H2K hoping, trying to get something back. We have to keep our eyes on Nuclear, but that's just expect going godlike. 14 kills to three, a dominant game one coming in from G2. Maybe like a Black Shield is the way to go. Tom Kenshi makes a ton of sense just for protection. While again, you want to counter Braum with a Janna. Set Javan up to succeed. Now, you get two jungles top lane. Sidestep, looking for the stacks though to stun up Odawamne. Yankos, the flash body slam forward. Odawamne not going to find the knockup. That's going to be first blood for H2K. Flash forward going to take it down. First blood for G2, rather. Yankos in trouble. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Going in. Barrel. Woo. 
Yeah, you can't do that. But lane, we might get one of those fights. Team four, and you're going to take a lot of damage. It's going to get knocked up. Che going to use the ultimate, but will be locked up for the duration. TP now coming in. Sven needs to make it out. That's going to be Mithy looking to be the sacrificial lamb. Che can just keep the stun going. Looks like the TP was canceled in the end. Che going to back off. No thick skin. Flash up as well. Nuclear is going to drop. Double kill for the bottom lane. That is the best bot lane in the West. Finally coming into their own. They see an opportunity. They take it now. Perks is moving in. Yankos running for his life. Shockwave trying to save the jungler. One more auto. The stun. One more trick. Going to take him down. Fevin might not even be safe under this tower. Poison ticking. And as you said, it actually baited his uh, bot lane. Let's see mid. Fevin now in trouble, though. That's going to be the kill down unexpected. He's looking to fire back, but Perks has more than enough damage to close out the kills. The rest of the team is here as well. Trick on the hunt. Oduwamne getting chipped down slowly but surely. No MR yet. But G2 just keep taking advantages to Fischio. They are not giving H2K the chance, but Perks locked up. Knocked back into the team. Silence, no hope for escape. Goodbye, says Odawamne. They gave H2K a chance right there. And Nuclear moving down to 20 is here as well. They're looking for the all-in. Nuclear going to get locked up. Jay holding on to the Devourer. Has to wait as long as possible. Now going to look to save, but expect is here. That's the TP that he saved from earlier. The flash, the flag, the drag. No ultimate, but he doesn't need it. Sven! Dishing out the damage, and G2 are ripping apart H2K. But the Shockwave... Waiting for G2 to make a play. They've been making them. Now bot lane, they're trying something. If they're looking at aggressive. Eyes on the rest of G2, though. H2K definitely going to be able to grab the kill on to expect here. But Yanko's very low. Multiple members committed. Eyes on G2, folks. This kill does not matter. Baron being taken down, Odawamne, you want a moment, you want a chance to prove you're a clutch player, then this is it, 4k and dropping. Remember, there's no ulti from Che, Odawamne's going in! They're backing off, peeling off the Baron, they're not gonna let it get low enough. Fevin trying to fire back, Odawamne's gonna take out Mithy, can they deny the Baron? Meanwhile, the Rift Herald is wreaking havoc on the top side. Che is moving in with ulti. Shockwave to try and clear. Fevin in trouble, there's no cleanse there, but knocked back under the tower, it's Perks. Exhausted as well, Trick looking for the disengage, Expect is right around the corner, but so is Odawamne, Perks taken out! Advantage to H2K. Oh, you can see, amazing. Not a fan of the lack of proactive drafts coming in from Odal Wamne and the rest of H2K. Perk's gonna get pulled back. Will they find yet another pick? It does not look like it. Odal Wamne not gonna make it out. The poison ticks him down. Dies right inside the belly. Che wasn't looking this for it. This is currently a 3v5 because Febby is on his way. There's an engage. G2 now looking for the fight. They're happy to not take the Baron. Looking for a little bit more. Nuclear trapped and all alone. Flashing out to safety. Oriana isolated. Perks looking for a little bit more. Does Fevivin have the damage to turn this back? Yet another arrow goes wide and Trek. Unable to miss one now. Does find the kill in the end for his team. Double drops. G2. What an immaculate performance. Naim entrance to the Baron pit. Another really good call from G2 around the mid lane. They're team fighting well. And they're securing the Baron. They struggled, they fell behind, but this week they have improved it and they're looking to keep this one going, but H2K not going to have it that easy. Perks looking to stun at multiple members. Shane now in trouble, the thick skin burning down quickly. Odawamne in the middle of everything. Alti is going to connect. He needs to make it out, but the Cho'Gath is just getting burned down. Maybe he can get something back, but no, the fight continues. Expect has he overstayed. Not going to get hit by the shockwave. Moving forward on a nuclear. There's nothing that Yankos can do. G2, they're picking apart H2K. These fights are absolutely one-sided. Edge Great tried to force in the mid lane because they saw Expect sitting top lane, but the disengage from Sven's Varus here was perfect. And then h 2 could not find the first kill. There's so many tools from G2 to stop them. They are going straight for the Nexus with all five members and the Baron buff. Nuclear, Arrow will be up shortly. Yankos, no cast to his name. Five members strong of G2. They're looking to move us forward to match point. They're looking to take down the remaining members of H2K and Nuclear. You are all on your own. Ace comes in for G2 Esports. J is up, but it is too little, too late. That's going to be 2-0 moving forward for G2 as they advance to match point. Very one-sided of ours, well, and it was a pretty easy still still for Mithy. <laughs> Not only that, the Abyssal Voyage, we saw H2K try to use it to set up a lot of plays. Now, Perks, this shut. is once again a slower early game, I think it's safe to say, but now... Oh, potentially in trouble. Quince does come out. Ulti drops onto Perks. Fevin has to be careful. No cooldowns left. Big show of confidence for Perks. The one we won. He was on the... Okay, still looking to make things happen. Perks may be faded in. Moving forward, nice. Oh Ulti my comes God. out. He's still looking for the kill. Trying to find the outplay. He's Locked insane. up. Perks moving for a little bit more. Yankos just wants to knock down the kill, but Perks is hungry for blood. Not gonna flash it in, but in the two. Right next to him. 
Now the fight may start. Sven locking up Che. They know that they have the level advantage. Moving in. That's the Devour used defensively. Che may just get taken down. The exhaust has been burned. He is now set to fall. The arrow comes out. Nuclear. I don't think he's going to be able to get anything back. Tongue Lash going to stun. Waiting for the flash over the wall. Sven moving in for a little bit more. Otto's coming in. The hail of arrows and another double kill for the G2 bottom lane. The two lane. Hey, 2v1. No problem moving in. My asthma means no flash for Febivin and a killing spree for Perks. H2K falling apart and G2. Hook gonna connect. Here's Mithy. Cleanse out. Walks away. Trick looking to turn it. TP on the way in. G2, no hesitation. They pull the trigger. They find that rampage for Perks. 6 0 for G2. HK doing the only thing they can do right now, oh, trying to force Abyssal a place. Oh, Voyage, Odo trying to flash to safety. Righteous Glory is going to take him out. He's trying to run. Miasma comes in, though. There's no escape. Goodbye, Odo Wamne. Perks unstoppable. Whenever he's go down. Of that Tom Kench. HK trying again, though. They really need some kills. Sven is here as well. Mithy running for his life. They have to pick who they're going to go for. Sven running back into no man's land. Mithy slowly getting burned down. Sven trying to stay alive, but that's going to be a kill for Febivin. This is a good start for H2K. Two taken off the map. They're looking to fire it back. Already the gold lead diminished. Only three at this point in the game. Around the mid lane. Flynn shoots. Flash forward the play. Good ulti coming in. Perks trying to fancy footwork his way out. He's going to get knocked back and taken down. And this was exactly the play we talked about here. Use the Ash Arrow to try and force. He will be forced to transform. If H2K can force for a few more seconds, that's going to be the chain CC. Mithy says no. Knocked out to safety by Yankos. Could be in trouble. Alti comes in. Trick on the way in as well. Febivin is in trouble. Cannot be saved. Taking so much damage in exchange. Expect is moving forward. But he's turned mini at the worst possible time. Now they're looking for the follow-up. Che will get picked off. G2 still cutting through two members of H2K. Yankus needs to land that ulti on a no-flash Tom Kench if H2K wants to get back in this game. But he did not manage to knock Mithy back into the team with perks inside his belly. That could have been two potential kills. It may not matter. Perks is on the hunt for more. Looking for Yankos. Baron's going to drop for G2 as well. That could be the final nail. Well, the Baron kill extended the gold lead. The Baron buff will continue to do the same trick. Just looking for a pick. G2 want to keep the momentum moving forward. Perks on out on a killing spree. H2K doing what they can to fire back. But Yankos is so low. Team holding on for as long as possible. G2 looking for the tower. Multiple low health bars. Odoamne could clean up if he gets the chance, but Perks is not going to have it. Mithy tanks the tower while the rest of the team cleans up. Febivin has to be careful. No one gonna drop on the side of G2. G2 will secure a tower here. A few low members, but Mithy once again with the Devour, keeping Trick alive. It always, it's a lot easier to play a frontline tank when you know you have a Tom Kench behind you, because you can stay a little bit longer, take a little bit more damage. Bot lane right now, Dracos. For a fight, Febben gonna find Mithy. G2 getting picked off. Odoamne, what can he do here? He is still getting ripped through. Sven does so much damage. Trick is going to get taken down by the tower. At the end of the day, it is a two-for-one trade in favor of H2. Black Cleaver, Frozen Mallet coming in. and Oh, hi. Now, Febivin. Yeah, goodbye, friend. Three and a half items already at twin. They can't really defend this one. Odoamne throws down the silence, but there's no follow-up engage. There's no follow-up damage without the Syndra here. So it's a slow and steady walk down from the side of G2. Have to be careful, though. Any moment, G2 could pull the trigger and look to engage. Sven does have the ultimate. Odawamne getting threatened here by Perks. Inhibitor is going to drop. G2 continuing to extend the advantage. Him, they might be able to burst him down, but that's just to support your killing. It's always the issue against Tom Kench. Shea finding the hooks. Oh, trick in trick. trouble. Moving forward, looking for a little bit more. Expect knocks him back into the team, and that's going to do it. G2 just going to clean up the fight. A beautiful engage comes forward. Mithy solo zoning out. Febivin, Maxlor is going to Worlds, and he's damn proud of it. Moving in, Deficio. I cannot believe it. They just got better and better after every game. And H2K, just another mob to a king. Because G2 are fountain diving away. And with one final win, one final dominant victory over H2K, they're going to punch their ticket to Paris. And they'll see misfits in the finals. Thank you very much, Drake. That was a very entertaining segment as well. Obviously, I'm here with the winners, with Mithy, with Perks, and with Zven after making it to their fourth final in a row. Uh, Perks, first off, obviously, you just saw all your big plays again. Uh, you must have felt really good at the end of that series, and now I'm proud of your own performance. 
Uh, well, after having such a disappointing performance last week, uh, like I was making so many bad calls and just straight up inting in the early game, uh, I really want to step up for today's series and play consistent and reliable. And yeah, I'm proud of my performance. Well, the whole team stepping up, uh, Sven, how different and how much better did it feel today after, as Perk said, that fight versus place where you guys nearly lost it in the end? How different was this experience today? I think everyone today played really good. There was very few mistakes. Every mistake was a more of a team mistake, not actually individual misplays like in the Spice series. I think we had too many errors mechanically and individually. So today our team play was very good and individual play was even better today. I think everyone had mechanical play on point today, so that feels really good to like just win games because of skill as well. But our like shot calling and our team play was really good too, I think. Yeah, it was everything was very good. Mithy, individually, it just seemed like you guys showed up more on the day. Do you think one or two things have to do with the fact that H2K was coming in cold, they had to perform today, it was the first time taking to the stage, and that you guys already had some practice last week? Maybe. Yeah, I mean, it's, it could actually be the case that us playing a best of five last week made us just think about how we are practicing a lot more during scrims and what works on stage and what doesn't. And just give us a better understanding of the meta too. So maybe, maybe that's what happened to Fnatic too, you know, that the fact that uh, we had the opportunity to play first, maybe that, that was the difference. Yeah, the two teams that played in the quarterfinals now also playing well. In the semifinals, uh, for you specifically, you had the all pro team and there was a bit of a drama because a lot of people, which wasn't even your fault, they voted for you and you got a lot of flack. So you personally wanted to say something because you did show up, especially in that last game versus Splice in that series, but in general. Uh, I mean, it's not really that I, I want to say anything. I just want to remind people that you guys said I was not the best and I will prove you all wrong again. So it's fine, you know, like it, it's, it's fun for me, uh, but it, it's just it's, it's fun. But yeah, it's, it's just what it is, you know, like I'm, I'm proving it once again and I will prove it again in the finals. It's it's going to be how it's going to be. It's going to be how it's going to be. Nice. Uh, keeping a cool head perks. Is it funny or? Sorry? Is it funny to yeah, you that you said that you're it? giggling the uh, whole time? It's really funny. Like, meet without two Koreans, hard stuck second place. <laughs> <laughs> meet with two Koreans. Okay, that's a fair point. Yeah. Right, a bit of banter, uh, a lot of smiles from you guys because you guys made it to the final. There's also someone else you made very happy, and I don't want to spoil everything, but I do want to take a look at one of the final pushes you guys did. So this was, it was pretty much done already, but you're going to push in for the final fight. So take a look at how you guys did it. I, I can't play by play, but it's going well. But, but yeah. Nars is hard question. Nars is smurfing. Nars is doing well. And then there's someone watching on the desk. <laughs> <laughs> well, he made you guys get to Worlds yesterday by winning with Misfits, and you guys now made sure that Misfits is going to go to Worlds as well. So They, they actually, uh, uh, Misfits actually gave us a warm-up game mm -hmm. th this, this afternoon. I, I want to say morning, but it was actually the afternoon. Well, yeah. Morning for us. Uh, so we're actually grateful for them because they helped us be warm for our series and even though Siva was playing support, they, they still, they still uh, like made us get warm. So that's re uh, really thank you to them, you know. Yeah, it was warm. The radiators were also on. That's nice. Uh, no, very nice of you guys. Uh, I want to take a step back and take a more serious note because obviously there was a lot to do this season or this split rather about our fanatic, you know, are they going to take the throne? And then that story kind of completely went away. Sven, how different was this split for you guys? Because in Europe, you guys weren't dominating for a change, but you again showed up in this best of fives. How was the learning experience coming into these playoffs and now getting your fourth final in a row? Isn't it fifth final? Fifth final, excuse me. Um, <laughs> okay, so, uh, <laughs> anyways, in the start of the split, we had a bit of a slow start. We had the three subs situation, then we had the problem that we played on different patches at MSI mm -hmm. uh, two weeks before that, and then there was a Riff Herald running around, and we had no <laughs> idea about the patch we were playing on. Sire Khan, oh my god. Yeah, Sire Khan, um, yeah, blows first two weeks. We had no idea about the champions we were supposed to play, the Riff Herald situation, and we got kind of schooled by teams like Fnatic, Misfits, we even lost to Unicorns, I think, and we had no ideas uh, like how to draft, so... The first five, six, seven weeks, we're just used to like catch up to other teams, and then once we got to the later weeks, I think we started to like, you know, be good again and start to learn ourselves. And then playoffs is just playoffs. Yeah, but it must have been a boost though that fifth game, and especially those final moves versus Splice, because it could have just as well gone the other way. Perks, did you feel a mental click this week coming up into this uh, semi-final that you thought, okay, now we got all our marbles in a row, now it's good? Well, honestly, I was really nervous. I was really nervous going into Splice. I I thought they were actually a good team, uh, just from what I heard. And they have good individual players too. And 
they usually get the, gr the, the good grasp of the meta and strong players in every role. And also, it was my first quarterfinal, so the pressure was like immense, and uh, I was kind of like mentally breaking down like so slowly. But then I just picked it up again for game five. Uh, I told myself that I don't care and play no regrets. And even though we had worse draft in game five, like Mithy and me did some clutch plays, and then we won the series, and it felt really great. So, but I knew that I wanted to step up my gameplay for today, so I don't have to. Uh, go over that again, over the feeling mm -hmm. of like feeling like shit, you know, because I play yeah. that. Uh, finally, I do also want to ask you about Febivin. We had the, the strong video there about how you guys kind of have a similar path. You guys are, you respect each other a lot as colleagues, but today it was all on the line. Um, is there anything you want to say to him? Because this must be tough. Like, HEK couldn't really do anything today. Uh, I think he was the best mid uh, in this split. Like, he played the, the most consistent out of everyone and always played really, really good. And today he played really good too, besides uh, the last game. He, he missed by the bits. But it's also a really, really annoying matchup to play. Uh, I think overall he's been the best player on H2K and yeah, he's just really, really solid. And I wish him more luck in the gauntlet. Yeah, the gauntlet, we'll talk about that in a minute because H2K will still have a big chance there. I do want to take a look at the playoff bracket and in the end that is all filled out because you guys will be going up against uh, Misfits in the final, which is not particularly what that many people had expected the playoffs to go. So Mithy, what do you find of Misfits as your next opponent standing in the way of yet another championship? Honestly, um, I thought Fnatic was two times better than Misfits at least. And uh, I was definitely proven wrong in the semifinals, so I don't know what to expect from Misfits, honestly. I, it seems like they're a very good team. They 3-0, 3-1, so we have actually had a harder time than them uh, in this in this like whole run. So yeah, we will see they how it really goes. Good. They are really good. They are really, they're really good. good yeah. uh, Sven, is it more tricky now to prepare because you guys maybe hadn't counted on the fact that Misfits would all of a sudden make such a good run in the playoffs? I mean, I don't think Misfits is a team that plays very, like, cheap stuff outside that one Ringa game. I don't think they play anything that's, like, too special from anyone else. And I don't think their players are, like, in, like much better than anyone else in, like, Splice or HK teams. So I think it's going to be another good best of five. Uh, but they're obviously better than everyone else in this playoffs other than us. So it'll be an interesting series for sure. But I don't, I'm not afraid of them, like, necessarily. So. Uh, how much is your mind already in, in Worlds, Smithy? Discount G2. Just wanted to let it let it be there for Misfits to think about that right. for the finals and uh, for Worlds. Yeah, we are definitely going to boot camp and try our best this time. We have been together for one year and a bit longer than that, so I think this Worlds is going to be a lot different than the last one. I think our MSI performance showed that we are able to adapt given the right time. What concerns me the most for Worlds is how we are going to adapt to the patch before we see other people play because we are really good at uh, learning the like, learning the meta when we see others play and when we experience our, ourselves some things but when we are cold and we don't go on stage and we just practice what we do in scrims we usually tend to not have a good grasp of the meta so that's what I think we will have to work on the most yeah how do you kind of avoid that because you can only scrim you can't play more games on stage you know uh, is there any mechanic that you guys have to get in your own head and make sure that you're ahead of the curve before you take to the stage perks well, the thing that you have to do is that you have to select the champions that you're going to practice and be sure, even though maybe they're not 100% meta, you have to be really sure that you can perform on them. And if you win scrims with them, then you can win on stage too. So you should just stick to, your, to the drafts that you have played and prepared for worlds. And then after group stages, usually the meta shapes up and the other teams, like uh, every team starts playing around the same. Everyone like adapts. But in the first group stage, it's like there's a lot of like random champions and, mm -hmm. and stuff going on. So it's, it's, it's going to be hard for sure getting out of groups. But uh, I'm confident in myself and my team this year to perform and make it out. Yeah, best of ones are, of course, always, always very, very difficult. I have to ask, is anyone standing in your way of that trophy next Sunday? Well, Misfits is in the way, but are they going to beat you? <laughs> Probably not. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't say so. At, at least personally, I'm, I'm sure I, I will give... I, I've been trying really hard. I, my personal goal is to make it to Challenger before I play the finals, and then I will just carry alone, I'm sure of it. <laughs> You've been uh, quite, you know... Okay. Banterish in this, I was going to say banterish in this interview, but it's nice. If, I feel like you found your groove again and you're just happy to go on stage uh, and play your best. I think I'm just, I'm just having fun playing on stage. I'm having fun being a professional player and like just having the opportunity to play against all these other guys who are also very good at what they do. So I just, I'm just trying to enjoy myself and like treat everything as a one-time experience and 
yeah, I'm just trying to make it as, as fun as possible for me and hopefully as fun as possible for me Switch too. If we can get some grudges going on, I think the finals will be even more interesting. Yeah, I mean, Maxor probably has a couple of things to say about that yeah, matchup. Sure. <laughs> I think Twitter... Uh, I'm sure Maxor has something to say, but uh, I'm going to say to him. So. Okay, well, I think Twitter will be on fire between now and then. One thing I do want to take a look at is the gauntlet and how the matches will play out because that is entirely locked in. The third place match can change nothing about that. H2K and Splice will be our very first match. The winner goes up against the Unicorns of Love and the winner goes up against Fnatic for that spot at Worlds. And when I took a look at this, I said the same thing as you, Perks. <sighs> that is Honestly, a this is really... Wrecked. This is like the most like gauntlet. Yeah, like it's... Uh, it's gonna be. I can't even. I can't even like see who's gonna win this stuff because I think anyone can take it. Honestly, yeah. I would besides unicorns, I wouldn't bet money on anything there. Nothing. I, I would. I would definitely not even try. Well, this is too hard to judge who's going to win. Oh, it's super difficult. But maybe we can think of uh, Sven. You played H2K today. You played Splice, of course, last week. Do you think that first match, who will be able to win there? Who do you think will be able to rebound well enough to make it in that first match? Well, I think Unicorns Loki sucks because they got 3-0 by Misfits like really, really fast. Um, I think HK and Spice both have to play two best of fives before they play against Fnatic. So given that Unicorns are not so good right now and that the other team has to play two best of fives, I think Fnatic will win the, like, the final of the gauntlet. Um, All right. Might not be a, like, a stomp or anything, but I think they'll win that gauntlet. Hey, you guys are not very clear what Sven thinks that Fnatic uh, has it. Um, I disagree. I think HDK or Spice will take the gun. I think the winner of the first match will destroy Unicorns, and then they will take over Fnatic and defeat them too. Two best of fives can like make you a different team. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, it's so hard to... Yeah. Um, who would you think is the best third representative from Europe? The winner of the gauntlet. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. You uh, guys are in a great mood. I think, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe unicorns can pick it up. They, they have to have two weeks of scrims, I guess. So uh, I don't know. Fnatic is, now that they changed their style, I would like for them to go to Worlds, but I would also like for Splice and H2K to go. I think if unicorns change a little bit and become more consistent in what they do, then maybe they can be a wild card at Worlds too. So. I think every team has a good chance. All right. If anything, uh, we'll have to see how they can all pick it back up, the teams that got knocked out. You guys, we will see in the finals next week, Sunday in Paris versus Misfits. We'll see H2K versus Fnatic in the third place match. And that will do it here from our studio in Berlin. We get a week to call off, and then we'll see you all back in Paris for hopefully an amazing third place match and an amazing final. See you then. Wow.